inductive versus deductive reasoning. We'll start off by looking at inductive reasoning. Um, inductive reasoning is where we find a pattern in specific cases in order to write a conjecture for the general case. They might ask us, based on the pattern, um, what is happening, right? What's going on here? So we look and we start with just one single square, and then we have three squares and we have five squares. But how are they adding the squares? They're adding one to the left, one to the top, then two to the left, and two to the top. So we can make our third, or excuse me, our fourth shape by adding three to the left. Let me go ahead and put this one back here. Okay, so if, let's say this right here was our original block, we've added three to the left, and now we can add three to the top. And we've used the pattern of the first three shapes to create our third shape, and we found our pattern in some specific cases, and now our general case is we're adding one square to the left and one square to the top. All right, along with inductive reasoning, we look at what's called a counterexample because for a conjecture to be true, it has to be true for all cases. So there can't be any cases whatsoever that render us a false statement. So this example we're looking at here says the value of x squared is always greater than x. Well, for most of the time, that is true, right? We could say, let's say, for example, 2 squared is greater than 2. So 4 is greater than 2. Hey, and that's true, right? So far, so good. Well, let's choose a negative number. What if we said negative 4 is greater than negative 4? Excuse me, negative 4 squared. That would be 16 is greater than negative 4, and that is also true. So it seems to be working for positives. It seems to be working for negatives. But what about 0, right? What if we said 0 squared is greater than 0? Well, 0 squared is 0. Ah, uh, zero is not greater than zero. So we have found our counter example, which then would tell us that this statement is false because we were able to find our counter example, okay? All right, let's look at deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is where we use facts, definitions, accepted properties, and the laws of logic to form a logical argument. So these laws of logic, we're gonna talk about two in particular. The first is called the law of detachment. The law of detachment states that if the hypothesis of a true conditional statement is true, then the conclusion is also true. So look at our example. If a figure is a square, then it is a rectangle. You know that quadrilateral WXYZ is a square. Using the law of detachment, what statement can you make? Well, our original statement told us that if a figure is a square, then it is a rectangle. Now we have a quadrilateral that is a square, quadrilateral W, X, Y, Z. So since it is a square and squares are rectangles, we could say quadrilateral W, X, Y, Z is a rectangle. All right, and that is the law of detachment. Okay, so now let's look at the second law, the second law of logic, the law of syllogism. The law of syllogism kind of comes in three parts. Really, it's two statements, and then we can use those two statements to write a third statement says, if the hypothesis P, then conclusion Q. Then our second statement would be, if hypothesis Q, then conclusion R. So this part right here is kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for a, a part of a statement that's, that's listed twice, right? It's the conclusion of one statement, but it's the hypothesis of the other statement. And it doesn't matter which order the statements come in, we can still write this third statement below. So we wanna identify Q first. We're gonna look at this example. We'll identify Q. And then that will help us identify P and R, which then we can use to write our final statement. So our example, if baseball practice is canceled, then you can go to the movies after school. If it is raining today, then baseball practice is canceled. So which part is listed twice? Well, we see baseball practice is canceled, baseball practice is canceled. So that must be Q, right? It is listed as a conclusion in the second statement. It's listed as a hypothesis in the first statement. Like I said, the order of those statements doesn't matter. So now we can identify R and P. So if Q, then R. So then you can go to the movies. So going to the movies must be R. And then since Q is our conclusion in the second statement, if it is raining today, that would represent P. And now we can write if P, then R. So P is if it is raining today. So we can say, if it is raining today, 
All right, so if P, then R. Then you can go to the movies after school. Then you can go to the movies after school. And that is the law of syllogism, inductive reasoning versus deductive reasoning. Thank you.